take a look at the two price charts in front of you. They're 22 years apart, but this is what I want you to realize. And certainly by the end of this video, I just want it to transform and change the way you view price charts. What are you noticing? What do you notice the common characteristics are? What do you notice that is similar in the pre-base action? What do you notice is similar in the basing action? What do you then notice is similar in terms of what the stock does just before it comes out of the base? What do you notice is similar in terms of how it then trends post-base? What do you notice? This is going to be the topic of the video. What does accumulation look like? What does absorption of supply look like? What does distribution look like? Really studying it from a volume price analysis and what are the common characteristics you see? And then going to take it a step further as well. I'm going to tell you the three main entry candlesticks that I look for. These are trigger bars, shakeout demand tails and gap down reversal bars. These are them where I'm looking for setup in the context of seeing the things I want to see from an accumulation, from an absorption of supply perspective. Then what am I looking for from a distribution? perspective as well so here you go here are two more price charts on the top you've got Novavax 2020 and then what you've got here is MBOT and it's on the five minute chart a daily chart and a five minute chart look at the similarities now I know this is just price but if we can notice similarities in terms of the price action of what do stocks do when they are basing when they are building flags Darvis boxes wedges pennants VCPs cup and handles we can notice similarities in terms of the price action so that's the candlesticks what are they telling us from a supply and demand perspective then we add another layer onto that we add in the volume what are we seeing from a volume perspective are we seeing signs of accumulation repeatable signs that we associate with yes the stock is being accumulated are we then seeing repeatable signs that yes there is absorption of supply large operators for whatever reason are supporting this stock then what tends to happen before a breakout as the stock is basing then what happens before the breakout these are things you want to know on a really really deep level so this is what we're going to be doing in this video okay Bro volume price analysis specifically focused okay we need to be specific here on breakouts and pullbacks and those type of bases and I'm going to take you through what I think are the best setups in the context of these common chart patterns so I really hope you guys are going to enjoy this this video market smith are today's video sponsor there is a discounted trial available in the comment section below let's start here with a chart of tesla now we've got two instances around the earnings now for me one is where large operators are accumulating and the other is where large operators are distributing their position so this first one here october 2019 is where there is accumulation and this is going to make sense on the next couple of slides but up here in january late january early february of 2020 there is a lot of distribution going on here and you may be like well why? why 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 is the distribution going on out here why why is this accumulation why is this distribution it's all going to make sense by the end so we've got to start with the price cycle we need to put everything in a context everything needs to be contextualized in the context of the price cycle stocks go through four main phases you have phase one accumulation phase two uptrend phase three distribution and a phase four downtrend you will see this repeat on the monthly chart the weekly chart the daily chart right down to the one minute chart but it's the law of cause and effect the bigger the cause Causality, the bigger the effect so if you see this forming on the weekly chart you see a really large phase one accumulation base and maybe it's 6 12 18 months long the uptrend from that the phase two uptrend is likely to be much larger than if you saw it building on the five minute chart of phase one base for the space of 30 minutes makes sense that's just logical but we need to think about on the higher time frame so like the weekly chart and the daily chart what are we seeing where do we think where do we think the stock is in terms of its own price cycle phase one accumulation phase two uptrend phase three distribution phase four downtrend because we tend to see repeatable things happen in each specific phase so it kind of then gives us the mental framework the mental representation to go okay yeah coming out of a phase one base really great reaction to the earnings here there's huge volume coming through then the stock is basing or is the stock a bit longer in the tooth it's trended up maybe it's up hundreds and hundreds of percent and then you're seeing kind of climactic action so if we go back to tesla this is climactic action late in a phase two uptrend this is early in a phase two uptrend as it's breaking out of this phase one base so we've got to be able to contextualize it where do we think the stock is now specifically in this video we're going to be focusing on phase two uptrends here is DocuSign as well just to illustrate the point phase one accumulation phase two uptrend phase three distribution top phase four downtrend there are common characteristics if you study stocks like this in such a deliberate manner you will identify common characteristics and multiple common characteristics in each phase okay what do i expect to see in a phase one accumulation basis it's transitioning into a phase two uptrend what do i expect to see when a phase two uptrend transitions into a phase three distribution distribution top i don't know a huge supply shoot like this which you'll learn about a little bit later on huge volume the largest volume ever 
Make sense? So high volatility, large volume, bearish candlesticks indicate distribution. Then a bit of common sense. Where are you in the price cycle? This one here, boohoo. This was one of the UK's biggest winning stocks from 2016 and 17. Phase one accumulation, phase two uptrend. Phase three distribution on top, phase four downtrend. There are common characteristics like do things, guys, in such a deliberate manner. Like go so, so, so deep on it. Be so specific in terms of what it is you're trying to do, what it is you are trying to learn about stocks and how they move. So this is what we're really going to be focused on when we think about the entries as well. So I'm going to take you through what I think are the best setups. So this is chart pattern context. So phase two uptrend. We're specifically going to be focusing here when the stock is in a powerful phase two uptrend, preferably hitting 52 week highs on the relative strength line, free tool on trading view, search my name, you'll find it. It is super duper good. So this is the context of occurring in phase two uptrends. These kind of chart patterns. Flags, triangles, pennants, cup with handles, wedges, flat bases, also known as a Darvis box. They are going to be the setups that you are going to see. Now, this is super duper important. Pause the video, read this. I've touched upon it in a lot of videos because it's so important. Okay, this is Toby Crabell's work, and this is the principle of contraction and expansion. And then to look for periods before a stock then breaks out. So we're specifically talking about when a stock is basing and before it breaks out. Invariably, in the vast majority of cases, you'll see a period of contraction. So we're then looking for periods of contraction. That then helps us create asymmetric risk versus reward trades. What on earth does that mean? It means risk a dollar to try and make many multiples of that dollar. So risk a dollar to try and make $3, $5, $10, $20. So you're looking for multiples of your risk. But if we know that we're looking for periods of contraction in those periods of contraction, if we know this is a timeless principle, we would then expect to see common characteristics in said contraction. So then what are we looking for in the contraction? Well, we're looking for volume drying up. Why are we're looking for volume dry up. I'll explain it in a couple of slides time because it indicates there's potentially a lack of supply, a lack of selling coming to the market. So then we're also looking for repeatable candlesticks that we tend to see in these areas of contractions. What do we see? Trigger bars that you're going to learn about, shake out demand tails, gap down reversal bars. So areas of contraction when they occur in the context of phase two uptrends, in the context of proper basing patterns, and then you start to see the contraction happening around certain key moving averages that I'm going to be taking you through can create a very powerful situation. So we're going to start off with trigger bars. I'm going to take you through trigger bars, shake out demand tails, gap down reverse bars. I've got a lot of examples for all of them. And as we go, I'm going to be explaining what it is you're seeing on the chart from a supply and demand perspective. So pause the video if you want to read a little bit more about these. But these are the kind of setups that I'm looking for when I'm looking for entries, kind of these ones here. You're going to learn this is a shake out demand tail. This is a gap down reverse bar. This is a shake out demand tail. This is a gap down reverse bar. And then you get tight, low volume inside bars. That's what I like to look for. So let's start off with Pinterest. So this is a stop time of filming this I currently have a long position in this so what is pinterest doing now i'm just going to kind of point to a couple of points on each chart i don't want to bamboozle you and give you like 10 things to remember on a chart right we've got how many slides have we got we've got 39 slides in total then at the end of this video you're going to see a bar by bar session where i then show you how to actually apply this and train yourself in a deliberate manner to improve your trading skill set trading is a skill set once you realize that and you realize there's four main areas of a trade number one how do you identify a high quality setup number two how do you control the risk create an asymmetric risk First of all, trading opportunity. Number three, how do you then mitigate the risk? Free roll the trade, take the risk out. Number four, how do you optimize the profits, both in terms of monetary gain, but also efficiency of that game? What are the selling rules? What are the selling guidelines that you're that you are applying? So Pinterest here, okay, is building a sizable base very sizable base and then here's going to be a key that you're going to see a lot what happens around the earnings certainly if it's more of a growth stock a true market leader as o'neill taught you in his book how to make money in stocks big earnings big sales big estimates institutional sponsorship kind of unique product potentially in an expanding area of a market or a kind of new field if you think about ai pinterest and ai but you know what i mean like new areas of the market so pinterest what do you see at point number one you see an earnings gap that then is a shake out demand tell is you're going to learn like a hammer type candlestick look at the high relative volume coming through and here's a real key as well remember what i said earlier this is a relative strength line not rsi it's a relative strength line search my name on trading view free tool in the indicators you'll find it right click on it add it to a new pane below or move to a new pane below i think trading views languages and then i'm looking for this i'm looking for 52 week highs 52 week highs why because it's showing leadership the stock is outperforming the indexes this is where the smarter operators in the market are playing they play where the relative strength is high relative strength that's where i want to be so you can see positive reaction to the earnings and then the stock trends up now what you're then looking for after an earnings gap like this is the stock to do specific things so let's just zoom out a little bit okay first and foremost you'll see there's some wiggly lines in terms of moving out 
averages. The most important ones for these type of setups are going to be the black line 10 day EMA, the key is down here, and the blue line, the 21 day EMA. I am looking for the stock to hold around those with, as you're going to learn, shakeout to Martel's gap down reverse bars trigger bars okay so i'm looking for the spot the stock to kind of bounce around those levels find support around those levels and then do certain things around there so at point number two can you see the contraction in price visually can you see how the price action the range narrows everything just kind of contracts it shrinks it does this okay it's not volatile it's doing the opposite now we have in conjunction with that look at the volume i'm very visual in terms of how i learn so the volume it just stair steps down for three days you see that and then you get the lowest volume bar thus far since the earnings gap happening and it's basically an inside bar sitting on the 10 day EMA so it's not just what's happening it's where it's happening inside bar 10 day EMA flag type pattern positive reaction to the earnings breaking out of this big base 52 week highs the tight bar trigger bar esque with low relative volume the black line here is the 30 bar average for the volume see how it's maybe a fifth a quarter versus that tightness in price low relative volume indicates there's very little selling there's very little buying which is good there's also very little selling that's what we want before a breakout remember the tony crabell point from a couple of slides ago expansion follows contraction so this is what we're looking for let me show you a couple others this is kd another stock that i'm in at the time of filming this so point number one what do you see you see large relative volume a gap up on the earnings what do you think large operators are doing here are they distributing or are they accumulating looks like they're accumulating and then the stock pulls into the 10 day ema and puts in this tight low volume inside bar on the 10 day ema and it's the first testing action of the 10 day ema after an earnings gap up like this where there was clear Clearly buying and then you can see contraction here you actually get three inside bars inside bar inside bar inside bar here's the contraction point again look how the volume dries up so these tight candlesticks now tight is also on a relative basis is always on a relative basis okay we are comparing the action of the stock to the action of the stock we're not comparing kd to a hundred million dollar biotech stock that's all over the place Okay, we're not doing that. So then what I'm looking for, I'll maybe exp I'll, I'll explain it on this one, right? So this is a trigger bar, right? Tight low volume inside bar sitting on a key moving averages in the context of an optimal basing pattern and the volume is dried up. So I invariably use a buy stop limit order with the stop loss attached. I have a QA and a video on my website, on my platform, answering how I actually go about inputting it and taking you through, okay? But what I'm saying here is I'm buying through the high of this bar stop loss just underneath the low. So the risk on the trade is around about one and a quarter percent, assuming kind of perfect execution, right? Now you'll see up here, this is the average daily range percentage, 20 day ADR percentage of the stock is two and a half percent. What I like to look for is for the initial stop loss to be half to two thirds, ideally the 20 day ADR percentage. That just helps keep the risk in check. So these areas Areas of contraction happening in the right place are really, really key. If we take a look at Toll Brothers here, you're going to see Toll Brothers. You're going to see some other. When we go to Shakeout Demand Tales, I'm actually going to show you three, three house builder stocks in a row. So if you take a look at Toll Brothers here, okay, what are we looking for? We are looking for evidence of demand. And how do we see evidence of demand? We're not looking on social media and seeing how many people are talking about it. I couldn't care less. I don't care what anyone on financial media is saying. Everything you need to know is right here on the chart. Every, I'll repeat that, everything you need to know is right here on the chart. What, what other information do you need? Do you need someone else's opinion? Do you need someone to come and cuddle you, give you a little pat on the back and say, it's all gonna be okay. Yeah, take this trade, it's gonna be okay. Do you need validation from others that what it is you're doing is right? Yeah, that's a good trade, mate, that's a good trade, mate. We're just gonna look at it and go, that's yeah, a good trade. Everything I need to know is on the chart. I can clearly see signs of accumulation. Look at point one. This is called bullish synchronicity. This is where you get a wide range candlestick and the volume is confirming the positive price appreciation. So look at this here, point number one. It's a widespread candlestick. It opens near the low of the day. It closes strong near the high of the day and it's a widespread real body. Look at the volume above the 30 bar average. This is indicating there is buying. There must be, okay? Widespread candlestick. Look at the volume. There is accumulation. This is what accumulation looks like. Look at point number two. It gaps up, but it's not just, oh, the stock gapped up. How did it gap up? What did it do? So the stock gaps. The prior closes here at around about $79.50. The prior close here, it gaps. It opens here. Now, what's the importance of it opening here? Look how the candlestick, it opened on the low of the day. So what is this telling you? Think about this logically. Everything I'm trying to explain to you is logical. It's entirely logical. Think about it. It gaps up. The candlestick opens on the low of the day, and then it pushes higher. Think about that. 
it gaps up, opens on the low of the day, and then pushes higher. There is an immediate presence of demand. As soon as the market opens, people are buying. Now, who's buying? Is it retail traders? Let's take a look at the volume. It's twice that nearly of the 30 bar average. Plus, it hits a 52 week high large operators and then with home builders you were seeing at this moment in time that there were a load of other home builders setting up as well and acting similar to this so it was a group wide move a sector wide move a theme wide move that you're seeing home builder after home builder after home builder after home builder doing this so this is visually point one and point two is visually what accumulation looks like and then we need to know what does absorption look like what does absorption look like this is what it looks like tightness in price on a relative basis, tightness in price on a relative basis, and preferably low relative volume. You see that? Tightness in price, low relative volume, but then we need to take it a step further, okay? Because it's what's happening, where is it happening? We know what's happening, but where is it happening? What we'd then like to see is an optimal chart pattern, a flag, a wedge, a pennant, a Davis box, an ascending triangle, a cup and handle, something along those lines. We'd also then like to see the stock hold above certain moving averages. As I said, the two most important ones are going to be the black line, 10 day EMA, the blue line, 21 day EMA. So something to be training your pattern recognition to dial it in, get super duper specific in terms of what are you looking for? What are you inferring from a supply and demand perspective? What is happening? Demand, demand, look at the absorption point here. Tightness and price holds above the moving averages, volume dries up consistently below the 30 bar average. Stock is a leader, look at the 52 week high. Tight, 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 tight. And then you get this tight little bar here. This could also be a little shake out demand tail as you're gonna learn about. Here's another one. This is a BITO, BITO. So this is a proxy for Bitcoin. So this is just something to dial in, okay? I'm actually gonna start with point number three and then I'll talk about point number one and point number two. Point number three, remember Tony Toby Crabell's point. Contraction is followed by expansion. We like those areas of contraction in the context of an optimal chart pattern. This here is a flag type pattern. Look how the volume dries up. It looks to be the lowest volume thus far in the base. And then you nearly have back to back inside bars and see how the volume just stair steps down. See how it's just stair stepping down. Tightness in price, low relative volume tells you there is sweet FA in terms of supply. Other side of the coin, there's hardly any buying as well. But guess what? Before a breakout, we want to see hardly any supply, hardly any buying. Okay, we just want a equilibrium in price where there's just no weight on either side of the scale. Think about volume as weight. We just don't want to see any weight. We just want to see like a couple of couple of little feathers, just either side, then just nothingness. Why? Because if buying then steps up and volume comes through, think of volume as weight, the scales of supply and demand are going to do that. Price is going to do that. As you can see here, there are common things you'll see time and time again. Now, this is a subtlety, but it's important. OK, slightly different here. But again, volume price analysis. Right. So bar number one, bearish bar. Right. Absolutely. Bearish bar. You can see it's not just oh, there's a red volume. It's not always just oh, there's a red volume bar. Oh, there's a red candlestick, as you're going to learn later when we certainly talk about shakeout demand tails. So you see here. Bar number one opens near the high of the bar, closes pretty weak. Yes, there's a little tail there, so a little demand tail, but overall bearish bar, right? Loses the 10 day EMA. Not great looking bar, and the volume popped. Okay, interesting. But then what happens on the very next bar? This is just something I see the creme de la creme do. When you see that bearish bar, pay very close attention to the next bar. You want to see either a bullish reversal bar, which number two is a bullish reversal bar, or a bullish absorption bar. A bullish absorption bar would look like bar number three, just tight bar, inside bar, preferably low volume, just to indicate that supply that was coming to the market on bar number one is gone. It's dissipated. There's no more supply. It's a good sign to see. Let's go forward. This is a this is a H G bar number one bullish synchronicity. Look at the volume coming through. Look at the volume coming through here. Do you think someone knows something? This stock has gone up 250 percent in a week and a half. Do you think someone knows something? Do you think you're seeing accumulation? Do you think you're seeing positive price action? Does it look like people are buying? So this is then what you're doing. You're looking for evidence. People are buying. Market participants are buying. Now you can't take out a clipboard and a questionnaire and go and ask everyone, hey, why are you buying? Why are you buying? You can't ring up Fidelity and say, hey, why are you accumulating a position in this stock? I'm not saying Fidelity is accumulating a position in this stock. But you understand the point. Hey, JP Morgan, Goldman Sachs, what are you doing? Why are you doing that? Sovereign Wealth Fund, why are you accumulating a position? Why are you doing that? When are you thinking? You can't do that. But visually, you can see what people are doing. You can see the cards. 
it's right there in front of you if you know what you're looking for. You are looking for signs of accumulation. You are looking for signs and evidence of absorption. You are then looking for signs of distribution, which would be associated with volatile price action. If we are associating this here, see this middle part here between 0.2 and 0.3, see this here, see the low relative volume. If we are associating tightness in price with low relative volume as absorption of supply and there's not that much supply coming to the market, what would we associate with distribution? The opposite widespread candlesticks, volume increasing, price moving to the downside. This here, from this point here to point number one, that's what accumulation looks like. From this top here down to here, this is what distribution looks like. It's right there. It's right there on the chart. MYO. Again, look how similar this is. This is what accumulation looks like. Powerful uptrends. The stock goes up around about 200% in a week and a half, two weeks. Look at the increased volume and the persistently high volume. People are buying. See the interest. Think about volume as weight. Think about it as interest. There's a lot of interest and it happens around the earnings as well. And then this stock stays above all key moving averages and it's gone up 200%. A stock going up 200% in the space of two weeks on persistently high volume and 52 week highs trending this nicely is a sign of accumulation. People are interested. And again, we can't just ring them all up and say, hey, why are you interested? And the why is not important. They are is important. The why is just made up. People could make it up. I don't really know why I'm interested in this stock. My mate was telling me about it. Or, well, we expect the company to do this and that and this. People will give you different reasons. It doesn't matter. The why isn't important. The reality of the situation is it is. It is moving up 200%. And then you're seeing signs of accumulation. So then we're looking for respect for a certain moving averages or moving averages, 10 day, 21 day. We're looking for the volume to drop. Ideally, the stock has 52 week highs. If it hits 52 week highs on the relative strength line in the base, this is basically a Darvis box type base in here. If it hits it in the base, it's an extreme sign of strength. And then number three, ideally, we'd like to see a lot of volume coming through on the breakout. That's even better. So bullish synchronicity, there is a synchronicity between the positive price appreciation and the volume. It's around about three times the 30 bar average and it hits a 52 week high on the breakout. So we have 52 week highs pre-base, we have 52 week highs in the base, and then we have a 52 week high on the breakout. Check, check, check. Path. So this one here, this is more of a large phase one. Now I was targeting the stock you see here, it put in what you're gonna learn about a shakeout tomato. Tight, low volume inside bar, which was a shakeout tomato and it gapped. So I didn't get it there. Then it tightened up here and I kind of missed that one if I'm honest with you. But this here is building a large phase one base. Remember that price cycle, phase one, transitioning into phase two. So something that you will commonly see on a transition from a big phase one base into a phase two uptrend is an earnings reaction that is extremely positive and happens on mega volume. Look at the volume coming through. Circa 50, 55 million shares traded on the earnings. What do you think is happening at point number five? Are large operators distributing or are they buying? Let's go to point number three, the previous earnings report. Do you think large operators are distributing or are they buying? You've got a widespread candlestick, opens near the low, pushes up, closes strong. Look at the volume. Three, three and a half times the 30 bar average. What do you think large operators are doing? And then in the second half of this space, you ready? What chart pattern do you see? Follow my pointer. Cup, handle. I'll do it again. Cup, handle. Where's the handle setting up? Where do you see the contraction in price? Around the 10 day EMA. Look how the volume dries up. Five sessions all below the 30 bar average. And then you get the lowest volume bar in some time. That's an inside bar sitting on the 10. There's very little supply. Look over here as well. What are you seeing around the earnings? You're going to learn this here is a shakeout demand tail. It actually gaps down and it's a shakeout demand tail. This is a sign of accumulation. Then two, three bars later at point number two, look at the volume coming through. Look at the positive price appreciation. What do you think large operators are doing around this earnings here, around this earnings here? Then you get a cup in hand. Were there clues in the base? Were there clues in the base large operators were accumulating? Now, is this a very interesting stock if it can build an optimal chart pattern in the context of phase two with all of this current information? Absolutely it is. So now let's go on to shakeout demand tells. You can pause the video here. You can read a little bit about these from Thomas Wasowski's book, Encyclopedia of Candlestick Charts. But these are shakeout demand tells. These I also use as an entry type candlestick as I have some water. So let me take you through a couple. Let me really explain it. So let's just start with big old boy, Apple. We've all heard of Apple, right? What do you think is going on around the earnings? What do you think is happening the day before the earnings, on the earnings, and preceding days after the earnings? Look at the persistently high volume. 
So this is not uncommon. In fact, this is quite common to then see an optimal base. This is like a Darvis box here, and I'll take you through this shakeout tomorrow tail and what this red line means at number three. But this is quite common to see. Something will happen around the earnings that potentially, certainly for the bigger boys and girls in the market who are looking to accumulate positions and hold for months and years, something could change around the earnings. Maybe the company says something, says something, they change the forward guidance, they get awarded a new contract, they deliver a new product to the market. And suddenly the perspective of the company changes, the potential earnings capability of the company changes, the sales potential of the company changes. Oftentimes things are driven by earnings and perceived earnings of the future. So something can change around the earnings, the messaging to the market, to market participants can change and they go, oh, we like that. Okay, we're gonna start building a position here. They may already have a position, now they're adding to a position, right? So around the earnings here, when you see persistently high volume around the earnings and bullish synchronicity candlesticks, widespread candlestick opens near the low, closes strong, opens near the low, closes strong, and then you see a really nice rally. I can't stress this enough, okay? Note the action pre-base. This is really, like you wanna do things so deliberately, so deep, really, really studied, like nerd out on this. What happens on a consistent basis pre-base? So pre-base, I'm basically talking about from here where that first black arrow is to basically where the start of this red line is. What happens? What do you see on a consistent basis the best of the best stocks do, the best of the best setups do? What do you see? Do you see positive price appreciation around earnings and after earnings on persistently high volume, and then a really nice uptrend that doesn't chop around all over the place. Can I get a drawing tool? I don't know how to draw on these pen. Let me get a pen. So it doesn't just like do this like that. You see like this, it's just chopping around all over the place. It's terrible. We don't like that. Let me see if I can erase ink on, erase all ink on slide. There we go. So you see how it was chopping around that? We don't want the stock to do that. We just want this, like that, just smoothness is really good. Why? Because this smoothness and the lack of volatility, again, if we are associating high volatility, high volume with distribution, what is accumulation? What does absorption look like? It looks like the opposite. So a rally like this with just multiple tight candlesticks is just absorption of supply. It's accumulation. It's fantastic to see. And then Apple goes and starts building base. There's actually a shakeout to Mantel here. <clears throat> but point number two, I want to emphasize this point again. Point number two, you get this shakeout demand out. Now, the fact that it's red doesn't really matter because the real body is so tight on a relative basis. So you get this shakeout demand out on low relative volume. How do we know it's low relative volume? It's below the 30 bar average. And note the low of the bar. So the low of the bar is around 18, around 187.44. Okay, it would be 187.45. But if you just draw this out, as I've tried to do with this red line, what do you notice? Where does the low of the shakeout demand tail go from a structural perspective? This is a Darvis box building here. So if you're a large operator, would you like to know how much supply is around? You probably would, right? You think, okay, but before we kind of push this up and continue our buying, let's just do a little test, right? Let's see how much supply is around. So I don't know, let's drive the price down a little bit, try and shake out some stop losses. Again, large operators, the two things they require above everything else, liquidity and perceived value. I'll say it again, two things large operators require above everything else is liquidity and perceived value. Warren Buffett's quote of be fearful when others are greedy and greedy, or greedy when others are fearful sums up the large operator's mentality perfectly. They trade and invest very differently to retail traders. So what we see here at bar number two is a move below the low of the last two, three weeks. So if you're a trader, maybe you're putting your stop loss, I don't know, underneath the 10 date. Maybe you're trying to buy in here like this, place your stop loss just in here. There you go. You've just been knocked out. Large operator, say thank you very much. So these shakeout demand tails that undercut base lows, and the base could be a flag, a Darvis box in this case, the handle of a cup and handle type pattern. If you see a shakeout demand tail or a gap down reverse bar that undercuts the low and the volume is low on a relative basis, what does that tell you about supply? It's not that much supply coming to the market. It's good to see. So it's not just, oh, I saw a shakeout demand tail. Where did you see it? What happened? What was the volume? Where was the low of the shakeout demand tail in relation to the base that was developing? It's not just what you see, it's where you're seeing it. MTH, I'm now gonna show you one, two, three home builder stocks. And these were all happening at exactly the same time, okay? So if you see a group or a theme and everything looks like this, not everything, but a lot of stocks within this group or theme look like this, I'd give it even more weight. For whatever reason, house builders, now you could probably go and Google it, YouTube it, and some people will give you some clever answers. That might be after the fact. So what you want to do is dial it in and go, I can see accumulation. Goldman Sachs are not going to be nice and ring you up and give you a heads up. 
JP Morgan aren't going to give you a heads up. Hey, we're accumulating. We're accumulating. No one's going to help you. But you've got to be able to look at it yourself. Be self-sufficient. Look at it yourself. Positive reaction to the earnings. So remember what I was talking about on the Apple chart. Does it look like large operators were buying on the earnings? Actually, a gap down reversal bar that you're going to learn in a couple of slides time. But here, the prior closes here. It gaps down, opens near the low of the day. Bullish engulfing candlestick closes really strong. Look at the increased volume. It's not retail traders doing this. Certainly, then when you go and look at the same period, look at the persistently high volume for DHI. Look at the persistently high volume for PHM as well. You see that? And then at point number two, you're going to see a gap for a lot of these house builders. So before you get to point number two, between point one and two, look at the tightness in price and generally the low to average volume, absorption of supply. And then from point two to point three, similar again, right? Tightness in price, low relative volume. There's not much supply coming. This is visually what absorption of supply looks like. Point number two, pop in the volume, pop in the stock, open near the low, Closes pretty strong. This is DHI, same session. Gap up, open on the low, push up. Look at the volume. This is this is PHM. Gap up, open on the low, pushes up, pushes up, closes pretty strong. 52 week high. Look at the volume. And then point one to point two. Look at the tightness in price. Look at the low relative volume. And then you get shake out demand tail. DHI, shake out demand tail on the 10. MTH, shake out demand tail. Low relative volume. And if you look at MTH, it's the same point as Apple. If you look about, can I get that drawing tool again? Let me see if I can get it for you. If I try and draw this back here, okay, like this, there you go. See how the low of this shakeout demand tail is closing below, or intraday, sorry, it's going below the low of the prior two and a half weeks. And look at the volume. What does that tell you about supply? There's not that much selling. So we're going, hang on, accumulation, absorption, accumulation, absorption, shakeout, and then the shakeout closes on the high of the day good setup does the risk make sense then that's something to think about so that's home builders a firm so this is one i was targeting and then i stupidly cancelled the order because of a little gap the next day and it and i messed that up there anyway okay so we look at a firm here what chart pattern do you see i'm quite liking the pen let's do some more pen here we go what chart pattern do you see i see a cup here and then i see a handle here we have a cup and handle is that an optimal chart pattern that's an optimal chart pattern look between point three and point four from here to here look at the volume the volume dries up. Can we see 52 week highs? We can see 52 week highs. At point number one, what do we see? Widespread candlestick, huge relative volume, and then look at how the stock pushes up in coming sessions. That is accumulation. That's what it looks like. And then the stock takes time to base. You get a gap up at point number two. It gaps. See how it opens on the low, pushes up. There's an immediate presence of demand. Look at the volume coming through. And then it starts to tighten into a flag. And then you get a shakeout demand tail inside bar on the 10 day EMA. And look how the volume dries up. There's not much supply coming to the market. Shopify, number three. I'm going to keep this uh, keep this drawing tool. This is uh, working well. Okay, Shopify. So remember what I said. Earnings, the earnings reaction can often start the move. Something changes materially for the company and large operators are like, oh, we like that. We're going to start buying more or potentially initiate positions. So Shopify, gap up on the earnings. Look at the volume coming through. This is not retail traders on doing this. This is not your mate at the pub doing this. This is large operators. This is the Goldman Sachs of the world. This is the Fidelities of the world. This is the JP Morgans of the world. This is the Sovereign Wealth Fund. These are people with a lot of cash, a lot of capital. This is them doing it. It's not your mate doing it. So you want to focus on what are they doing? And then after the earnings gap, what do you see? Tightness and price. Oh, little Darvis box. And then take a look here. Little gap up. Look at the volume coming through. Opens on the low. Pushes up. Point number two. Look at the bullish synchronicity. Look at the volume pop. Look at the 52-week high. Point number three. Are you seeing more evidence of demand? Look at the volume pop. Look at the 52-week high again. And then look here. Okay, this point in here. Tightness and price. Remember the Toby Crabell point. Contraction is followed by expansion. We like that. So Shopify was buying it through here and then free rolled it, got knocked out here. This was the FMC meeting. So I then free rolled it, got knocked out and then it turned around. But hey, ho, it is what it is. The market is not easy. Trading's not easy. But look at this period in here. Look at the volume dry up. Tightness in price, low relative volume tells us what about selling? There's not much of it. We like that. Next one here. This is Amazon. So remember what I was saying around the earnings. Something material can change. So it seems like earnings sparks this rally for whatever reason. You will find 101 reasons. It doesn't matter which one it is. What matters is it is. If you need a narrative to make you feel better, 
probably not going to do that well. The reality of the situation is Amazon is doing this. You may disagree with why Amazon is doing this. The market doesn't care about your opinion. Unless you're a sovereign wealth fund who has a shed ton of capital, the market doesn't care about your opinion. It doesn't care. It may care for a minute second when you're putting in your buy or your sell order, but that's it. Straight after it, it just forgets about you, which is the great humbler of the market as well. Something that you need to learn in your trading journey is humility. So here, point number two, check out the Montel. Point number three, check out the Montel. So where are we then looking for these type of candlesticks to check out the Montels? 10-day EMA, 21-day EMA. And then we get this nice gap down reversal bar as well, which you're going to learn about. And then point number four, here we go. Shake out the Martel, undercuts the 21, undercuts some recent days as well. And the volume is generally drying up. And what chart pattern do we have? Basically, a flag, Davis box. And then we're thinking about the initial risk relative to the 20-day ADR percentage. Nice. MRTX. So this one hit. Okay, this one hit, it actually, the company got acquired. That's why you then see this real tightness in price, okay? Do you think something happened here? What's well, around the earnings? Look at the volume coming through. Do you think someone knew something? Someone was acting upon something? I don't know. Maybe. Do you think this hit around point number two, these two bars? Look at the volume pop. Remember, company in at these points here, company in, what's that? Week and a half is going to announce that it's being acquired. Do you think someone knew something? Acted upon something? Told their mate? Don't know. Maybe. Maybe not. And then point number three, you get this inside bar, shake out demand tail, low relative volume. And then through it goes. Fascinating. Next one, MSTR. So here you can see what will often happen at the kind of beginning of these rallies is it could be on earnings, it could be on an announcement, it could be no news. But what you can commonly see is a big move in terms of the volume on a relative basis this is probably two and a half times the 30 bar average i'd say it gaps up opens near the low okay pushes up it's okay a little kind of supply shoot a little supply shoot here that's where price is trying to go up but sellers are bringing it back down and then we consolidate in a relatively tight manner volume dries up there's 52 week highs number two this is actually a shakeout demand tail the volume pop the stock closes on the high of the day evidence of demand there's buying and then here this one that i pointed to here this is a supply sheet okay high relative volume this is telling you two things it's telling you willing buyers are there because they are pushing this stock up willing buyers are there they're trying to push this stock up but sellers are pushing them back down like this so it's telling you there is willing buyers but supply is becoming dominant certainly when you've just seen a rally like this is a little bit of a kind of clue that there's probably going to be a little bit of a pullback at least in coming sessions 52 week highs pre-base are really good to see and then we see the stock shake out to Montel off the 10 it will shake out to Montel there off the 10 shake out to Montel there and then you get two tight bars in here on low relative volume but large operator let's just make sure we do shake them out so if we then just drag this across see how the low of this bar undercuts recent lows and what's the volume it's below the 30 bar average what does that tell you about supply selling there's not that much of it really constructive action to see this one here, this is RXST. So again, look at the volume here on the earnings reaction. And that seems to be the catalyst to spark this rally. So what can often be the catalyst to spark the pre-rally move, or sorry, the pre-base move? So this is then the basing action here. What can be a really constructive sign is a really positive reaction to an earnings report on volume, preferably as well. A widespread candlestick pushing up that can be really really good to see and then we're looking for the stock to find support of action primarily around the 10 day email the 21 day email that's going to be the black and the blue line so it pulls back down shake out demand tail off the 21 then it rallies more bullish synchronicity at point number two pulls back down shake out demand tail off the 21 then it tightens look how the volume dries up in here little shake out demand tail trigger bar s right there closes on the high it's a really good setup and then there's another really good one right here inside bar bull harami see how the volume just stair steps down here look at the 52 week highs next one this is s so this stock here is building a large phase one base if i just drag this across like this so here it's building this large phase one base now institutions large operators create base lows so when you're looking at a large phase one base like you would in a phase two base as well but when you're looking at a large phase one base you're looking for 
footprints. You're looking for signs that yeah, large operators are in here. They're doing their usual thing, especially around the earnings as well. So what do we see? We see a shakeout demand, how price is going down, but willing buyers step up. We see it on the earnings as well. Price is going down, but willing buyers step up. Now, who are the willing buyers? Who's likely to create the lows? This is then developing that Bayesian mentality. You constantly update your decision-making process as new information becomes available. And then price holds here. A couple of shakeout demand tells here. Shakeout demand tell. Point number three, earnings gap down. So this is actually a quasi gap down reversal bar. And then look, coming sessions afterwards, bullish synchronicity bar, bullish synchronicity bar. What do you think large operators are doing at point one, at point two, and point three? Then what do you think they're doing at point four? Look at the volume coming through. Look at the widespread candlestick, opens on the low, pushes up. And then here you get a cup and a handle, and you get shake out demand tail, shake out demand tail, shake out demand tail, all off the 10 day, 10 day, 10 day EMA. And then the stock, like you saw with PATH earlier, comes out of this big phase one base on volume, and is now pushing up. So if this stock here can go and build like a flag type pattern or something like that and tighten up around the 10, something like this, it could look very, very interesting indeed. Here's another one, CrowdStrike, okay? So what do you see? You notice that earnings seems to be the catalyst for this rally pre-base. And then the stock pulls down here, goes towards the 50 and then starts tightening up. Right before the breakout, what do you see at point number two? A shakeout demand out. What do you notice about the volume? There's not much. What does that tell you about supply? There's not that much. And then on the breakout here, you then get really high relative volume coming through. It's really good to see with positive price action. And then point number three, this is also a shakeout demand tail that's an inside bar. And then look how the volume just dries up here. So what you will see in terms of breakouts most commonly, the mental framework that I have in my head, if I draw it up here, okay, let's say you get like this ascending triangle, one, two, and then kind of three like this. You will have the pop, the test, and then the reversal. So this is your pop, this here is your test and then this here is your reversal so around here can be a spot to be looking for an entry if you get what i think is an optimal candlestick as well and everything looks right from a price and volume perspective so you then get a trigger bar shake out tomato gap down reverse bar you're going to learn about so here you're pulling back in so pop test before the reversal and then you get an inside bar shake out tomato on low relative volume what does it tell you about supply there's not much of it even better if it's then a confluence of then testing the previous base high and that ties in with say a key moving averages like the 10 the 21 or the 50 day period moving average now we're going to go on to a gap down reversal bar so you can pause the chart here you can read about the data from thomas Vesorsky's um, book so these are gap down reversal bars that i then look for so let me take you through gap down reversal bar so it's going to be point number three is the gap down reverse bar now he have an earnings gap up but it's not as good as some of the other ones we've seen. The prior closes here, gaps up, opens here, and then closes quite weak. But there is this shakeout to Martel on high relative volume. Bit of this, bit of that. There's some accumulation, there's some distribution. But then what does the stock do? Holds around the 10. Shakeout to Martel at point number one, off the 21. Another shakeout to Martel at point number two, off the 21. And what do you notice about the volume? It's drying up. And then this is a gap down reverse bar. So the prior close is here. It gaps down, opens basically on the low of the bar and pushes up and closes strong. And what do you notice about the volume? There's not much of it. What does that tell you about supply? There's not much of it. So there is an ease of movement back to the upside. Think about it. Price gaps down and then it easily reverses and moves to the upside. How do we know it's easy? Because there's not much of a fight. There's not much effort. If you think about effort being the volume, there's not much volume. So pressure easily moves to the upside. And then it's in the context of this as well that we're seeing. This is a gap down reversal bar. These are the kind of setups I like looking for. This is DoorDash. What do you notice around the earnings? Do it look like large operators are accumulating or distributing? Look at the 52 week highs, look at the volume, look at the gap up, hold tier, pushes up, next bar, opens on the low of the day, pushes up, immediate presence of demand, pulls in, where does it find support? Perfectly on the 10 day EMA, you got it. And then over here, 10 day EMA. So now we have a quasi kind of cup and handle type pattern forming here and number three is a gap down reversal bar so if you look at it the prior close is right here it gaps down opens on the low of the day and closes pretty much on the high of the day and it does it on volume circa half the 30 bar average what does that tell you there's hardly any supply price easily moves to the upside bar number three is an ease of movement to the upside it's just telling you there's hardly any supply around so a gap down reversal bar i think is an, then an optimal entry candlestick to be targeting through the high Go on to the next one, Uber. What do you notice around the earnings? What do you think large operators are doing around the earnings? Does it look like they're accumulating or distributing? Take a look at the volume. Look at the 52 week highs on the relative shrimp line. <clears throat> and then what are we looking for? Black line, blue line, 10 day EMA, 21 day EMA is a reference point where we're looking for some supportive action. So at point number two, 
holds the 10 on that bar there and then bounces really nicely off the 10 and look at the little pop in volume. Does it look like large operators are supporting the stock in a region where you'd like them to support the stock and expect them to? 10 day and 21 day. Yeah, you're looking for it. Now, 21 is going to be more optimal for many, but the really good stocks in the market, 10 day can be enough. Then you pull back down to bar number three. So the prior closes here, doesn't look very good, but the next bar, gap down reversal bar off the 21 day EMA. Look at the little pop in volume. It's telling you, okay, large operators stepping up here, absorbing supply. And look how the low of this bar, if I just drag it across, the low of this bar undercuts the last, what's that, four weeks, three weeks of trading. Knock those stop losses out. Large operators, liquidity and perceived value. Two things they require above everything else. This one here, Informatica. So let's start with point number one around the earnings. What do you think large operators are doing here? Look like they're buying or selling. Look at it, gap up, open on the low, closes really strong, high relative volume, tries to push up the next session. Okay, pulls in, bounces off the 50. 50 day moving average is an area where you'd be looking for supportive action. And then it just kind of chops around. This is just choppy, it's difficult to trade, okay? But then we have another earnings gap, and this time the gap, it gaps and it opens on the low of the day, okay? Look at the volume, gap, open on the low of the bar, low of the day, and then it just pushes up. Think about this, it gaps, opens on the low of the day and just pushes up. Price never then goes below that point. What does that tell you about how powerful the buyers were, how immediate the buying was? There's an immediate presence of demand. As soon as the stock opened, buyers were stepping up. And we think it's large operators because of the size of the volume. Oh, and there's a 52 week high as well. Interesting. And then we see more buying around point three. Three bars in a row, bullish synchronicity. Widespread, open near the low, push up, open near the low, push up. Really good to see. And then it goes and builds a flag type pattern into what moving average? The 10. And you actually get, I know it's a little bit difficult for you guys to see, but there's actually back-to-back -back gap down reversal bars. And look how the volume dries up. Nice. This is GV, this is G-E-V-O. That's my dyslexia there. So what do you notice at point number one? Suddenly, for some reason, some catalyst, this stock has woken up in a big way. Look at the high relative volume coming through. This is huge for the stock. Does it look like buying? Does it look like accumulation? Gap up, open near the low, close strong. On huge volume, it doesn't look like distribution to me. You then get a similar bar without the huge volume, but still high relative volume at bar number two. And then it pulls back down. And then what are we looking for? Basically black line, blue line. We're looking for certain things. We're looking for evidence that there is absorption of supply. There is accumulation going on. So we're looking for shake out demand taps, gap down reverse bars, tightness and price, low relative volume. So here you actually get a little gap down reverse bar onto the 21 day EMA. Why the 21? Because it's just an area where you tend to see this type of behavior. It's about studying stocks in a ridiculously deliberate manner. Here, the stock actually builds a flag type pattern into the 10 day EMA. This is actually a gap down reversal bar. Here, note the tightness in price. Now, is every breakout gonna work? No, that's why you use risk mitigation and control the risk. So this one here, this is my sign, final slide, and then you're going to see a bar by bar session. So we take a look at NVIDIA around point number one. Remember what I've been blabbering on about earnings potentially being the catalyst to start the uptrend pre-base. So what do you notice? Persistently high volume, 52 week high, improving relative strength line, and a really nice trend. It's not just chopping around all over the place like this from point one to point two. It's not doing that. Let me just clear that ink on the slide for you. It's not doing that. It's just a really nice, really nice uptrend like this, holding around the tent. Then we see more buying at point number two, more 52 week highs. And then in the base, black line, blue line, basically, are we seeing support around the tent? Shake out to Montel, shake out to Montel. Okay, holding here. Okay, kind of loses it here, but the volume is dried up, tells us there's not too much supply. And then bar number three, this is a gap down reversal bar. The prior closes here, it gaps down, opens here, and note that the low of the bar undercuts the lows of the last two weeks, two and a half weeks. And what do you notice about the volume? It's below the 30 bar average. What does that tell you about selling at this level? There's not much of it. So you think you've seen a stock that's had a good reaction to the earnings, powerful uptrend, persistently high volume coming through on that rally, 52 week highs, starts basing, and now you get this gap down reverse bar off the 21 day EMA, which is an area where you expect large operators to support the stock, certainly first test after a positive earnings reaction. Now, maybe there's a setup to be had here. You want to be thinking about the risk relative to say the 20 day ADR, or maybe you wait and see if then you get kind of a trigger bar setting up as you get a point number four and note how the volume dries up and note where the trigger bar is, 10 day EMA. Really, really powerful stuff. So what I'm now going to do guys is you're going to see a bar by bar deliberate practice video 
And I'm going to go bar by bar and illustrate the importance of these concepts and how you can train yourself in a very specific manner, in a very deliberate manner. Realize that trading is a skill set and you can proactively work on improving your skill set in the four main parts of every single trade. Number one, how do you identify a high quality setup? Number two, how do you go about controlling the risk, create asymmetric risk versus reward trading opportunities? Number three, how do you mitigate the risk to free roll the trades? Take all of the risk out. Number four, how do you go about optimizing the profits to get the big trades right? What are the selling rules? What are the selling guidelines that you are using? And that is what you are going to see in the next part of this video. So thank you very much for watching and I hope you enjoy the bar by bar session. Okay, guys, we're now going to practice deliberately what I was just teaching you in the video bar by bar on TradingView. But first and foremost, we need to select a stock. So what I'm going to do is go into my custom built stock screen here and I'm going to go preset scans. I'm going to come down to the liquid momentum high ADR. I'm going to click search on that one. I'm going to double click the ADR percentage on a 20 day basis. That was a funny way of saying percentage, wasn't it? We'll scroll down here and now we have a list of stocks. Now they're higher ADR because I think it's going to help illustrate the point more as we do this. So now I need to select one of them. So I'm going to go random number generator and let's now generate a number seven one two three four five six seven that's going to be a biotech stock i don't want to do this on a biotech stock i don't really like trading biotech stocks i'm not going to do it on a biotech stock let's go for number two so that's going to be upst okay let's load up trading view like this zoom in as close as we can upst like this Okay, like that, and then I'm going to press Alt G. I'm going to go back as far as I possibly can to 1970. Okay, we start here, so let's go with the replay function, select it there, zoom out, and now we can start going bar by bar on UPST. So we can already see initial IPO day, pretty good bar, right? Good volume coming through. We're going to imagine that's pretty high volume as well. We start to get a bit more reference point. We've got a 52 week high on the relative strength line. Okay, nice. Then we're going to be filling out trades in this updated spreadsheet. It was a member that updated it and it's made the spreadsheet even better. So thank you. Uh, thank you very much for that. So let's wait for a couple of moving averages to come in. First one's going to be the 10 day EMA with the black line there. So, okay, we're looking for, <clears throat> we're looking for trigger bars. We're looking for shake out demand tails we're looking for gap down reversal bars around certain moving averages preferably it's building a that there is quite a nice tight bar quasi kind of like cup and a high handle pulling back in i quite like that bar really good adr at 15 percent. i'd be there i'd be there so the initial risk on the trade is about a third versus the adr percentage that's pretty darn favorable so yeah i'd be targeting that one okay good we've been able to get in and then what we're going to do for this one is we're going to use I use a buy stop limit order with the stop loss attached, but the limit is usually within 0.5%, maybe 1% if I'm really feeling it of the high this time here at the trigger bar. So within 0.5% of 56.22. And then what we're going to do is imagine, because this is how I trade, this is the bar by bar deliberate practice nature of things. What I'm going to do is then use a sell limit order to sell one third of the position at two times the initial stop loss. In this instance here, it's going to be 62.16. So what we've been able to do is get in and free roll the trade there. Okay, good. And then what I'm expecting after the breakout is a pop, a testing action, and then a reversal. So that's the mental framework that I have in my head. So, okay, gap down reversal bar there. Another tight bar. Potentially it's targetable. Um, a bit of a supply shoot the day before. We'll give it a kind of miss there. Okay, there we go. So this is the framework I have in my head, okay? I'm expecting a pop, a test, and then a reversal. Now my selling rules, selling guidelines kick in. Black line, blue line, 10 day and 21 day EMA. I'm just gonna be looking to ride those for the purpose of these. So first close below the black line, we're gonna take off one third of the position like that. So we're literally just gonna do it there, okay? Nice and simple. And then we've got one third of the position left and we're just gonna do it on a close below the blue line, being the 21 day EMA. So black line, 10 day EMA, blue line, 21 day EMA. So now we can go and work this out. So 5%, so we're selling it two times that. So that's going to be around about 10% to free roll. So we've got 10%, 46%, and 36%. So what we do is we go here, we go 10, 46, and 36. That'll give us an average. I'll put the link to this spreadsheet in the description and also in the comment section so you can use it for free. So now what we do here is we go UPST like this. Uh, it was a pullback setup and it's going to be 30.67. Now we're going to imagine for the return simulation, we're putting 100% of our account in every position. Is that realistic? No, but it's just something to make these videos maybe a little bit more interesting. If you're just interested in the stats, in the stats, then obviously just pay attention over here and ignore this bit over here if it irritates you. So there we go. First trade done. Let's go find a, another one. So that was a nice pullback trade. 
Okay, so nice pullback trade. And at the bottom here, you then get this trigger bar on low volume, just indicating there's not much selling pressure. And you're seeing the right type of candlestick in the context of a pretty strong stock with kind of a cup and a high handle there. So a lot of things then going for it. And we could see the strength initially. Look at the volume, look at the buying, look at the 52 week highs. Okay, all good. Okay, shake out demand tail. So now we are looking for another setup. Okay, pulling back in, we've got earnings coming up. I'd say that's a pretty good reaction to the earnings, right? What do you think large operators are doing there? Okay, look at the volume, look at the 52 week high gap, opens here, pushes up. That's a really, really, really good bar to be seeing, okay? Really good bar to be seeing. So okay, let's play it forward. So now we've had that reaction. Now I'm looking for setups around certain moving averages. So this is a gap down reversal bar off the 10. The prior closes here, it gaps down here, pushes up, okay. It's a sign that buyers are stepping up in a region where I'd like to see them. So now I'm looking for a setup, okay tight little inside bar there really high adr of 18 percent great reaction to the earnings kind of building a flag type pattern three clear contractions one two potentially three lowest volume in the base so far so i'd be there i'd be there let's think about the initial risk relative to the adr about five percent we'll round it up to six percent so we've got six percent off an adr of 18 percent it's a third in what looks to be a very strong so i'd be targeting it there and all of that and it never filled so for me buy stop limit order with stop loss attached it's got to move through the high of the prior day that is then the trigger that is the buy stop so it didn't go through 145.78 there's no position filled but this one here still on my radar maybe we get something around the 21 okay let's see shake out demand tail what's the risk going to be looking like 10 percent. i don't want to be there with a 10 percent stop not on that setup anyway i didn't like the bar beforehand right just didn't look quite right okay 50 day Okay, starting to show signs of life around the 50 day with this kind of nice reversal candlestick, quasi bullish engulfing candlestick. What's the risk going to be? 11%. Oh, it's so volatile. Um, it, for the purpose of this video, I'm not going to I'm not going to take it, but I am interested to see what would happen. 11% is pretty wide, right? So around the 50, yeah, it would have kind of been a good trade. Now maybe it can start tightening up. So, okay, what's happening now is we're pulling down, bouncing off the 50 sign of institutional support. And then here, potentially a low pivot is starting to form. So, okay, let's keep it dialed in. See if it can do something. Okay, didn't weird reaction to the earnings here. So very opposite to what happened here. It kind of gaps up, opens on the higher the bar, sells off on volume. Like that to me is just saying someone sold into it straight off the open, not a good sign, okay? Okay, then reverses, trying to confuse us, isn't it? It's all a bit choppy at the minute. Okay, it's down, it's up, it's down, it's up, it's down. Like, okay, it's a little bit erratic. We need something a little bit more kind of logical in terms of how it's uh, how it's moving. Okay, supply shoot. Okay, to the 50 again. Does it want to bounce? Not really. It's kind of holding around there. Maybe tightening. Mm, it's all a little bit choppy isn't it it's up it's down there's no kind of okay that i like that bar there you see the pop in the volume coming through i like that nice pop in the volume good bar reclaim 50 day moving averages maybe it can set up maybe it can't set up we have got earnings coming up okay into the earnings i think earnings is probably going to be the next bar okay okay reaction to the earnings good volume Gap up, shake out demand tail into the base highs. Okay. Okay. Okay, interesting. So again, it's like a nice tight inside bar. It's reminding me of like this bar here somewhat. So it's a nice tight inside bar. The volume is just stair step down. This is much more kind of logical in nature. The volume stair step down, 52 week highs, good reaction to the earnings. I think I'd be targeting that. Coming through the high there. So I'd be there, there. I'd probably rather get a stop loss underneath there, but I do quite like the bar. Uh, initial risk, call it 4%. That's half the ADR percentage. Okay, like that as a metric. So our free roll target is 221.64. Okay, got out well. Okay, we've been able to free roll there. So you see, even though the close isn't above that level, that's why I use a sell limit order so I can define the level that I'm looking to sell. So okay, now we free rolled it. But what am I expecting? Some form of testing action, okay? So I'm expecting it to test in some way and then reverse so it kind of this was in the test and it held up quite well and now starting to reverse good okay nice you got 52 week highs coming through that there is quite a nice inside bar as well that there wouldn't have been a bad entry too so okay now we're just using the black and the blue line just to keep things nice and simple for this um for this video 
So on a close below the black line, we're going to sell a third. There we go. So we sell one third at the close there. And then can it hold the blue line? That's quite a nice tight little bar down there by the 21. Mm, what's the risk going to be on that? 5%? I'm thinking about it. You know, I'm thinking about it. Mm, nah, not quite. Okay, gap down reversal bar around the 21. What's the risk going to be? 8.5%. It'll be 9% off an ADR of 7 and a quarter. A little bit too wide, I think. Okay, much tighter bar. Quite like that. So now the risk is going to be a lot tighter. This is quite why I like trigger bars because, it's, again, tight stops relative to the ADR percentage and just tight stops in general, right? So 4% off an ADR of 6 and 3 quarter percent. Okay, quite like that. So we're going to look to add the add to the position, make a new position, whatever we want to call it. We'll just, for the purpose of this, say new position. Okay, so we do actually get filled on that bar there because the high, the high will be here. The high looks to be, yeah, 319. The low is 305. So we're not stopped out, but we do have a new position on this bar here. Okay, I'm just going to make that pink. So we're looking to free roll that one at 338.89. Okay, getting out. What I'd probably do here in real life is now adjust the stop loss up from where it is probably to the low of that bar and uh, free roll it there. But okay, we're able to free roll it here. So I've just removed this one. So we've got two live positions now. One, we're looking for a close below the 10-day EMA. And then with two of them, we're still looking for a close below the blue line being the 21-day EMA, okay? Okay, getting out well. So remember that mental representation, that framework, pop, test, reversal. First close below the 10, I'm going to take a third off there for this position here. We could maybe think about it as still the testing action, but it's come down a little bit of a way here. So I would take some off there and then first close below. Yeah, that, that's then going to be the exit. Okay, clear, clear close below the blue line. Volume is popped. So both positions would now be exiting. So let's go and input those. So the first one, our initial stop was say three and a half percent. So we're free rolling here at about 7%. Okay, so we've got 7, 44, 58. So we go 7, we go 44 and we go 58 to work out the average. I would say eh, it's a breakout, it's not a pullback. So we've got breakout here, UPST like this, and then uh, 60, 36, that's my dyslexia, 33 like that. So that's that one dealt with in terms of inputting it into our spreadsheet. So we can now delete the blue arrows, focus on the pink arrows, this one here. So I'd say this is more of a breakout instead of a pullback buy initial stop three and a half percent so we're free rolling at about seven percent and then this exit here so we've got seven we've got eight and then three so we go seven which is already in there eight and then three so the average there is going to be six percent so upst and then we input six percent like that so let's keep going with this one here okay mm, it's not a bad bar this bar here is making me a bit nervous. That bar there, the break of the 1021 on volume. I'd rather see it kind of pop back up on volume and then pull back in like that. Let's see if it wants to do that. Mm, type bar, you've got earnings like two days away. I'd like to try and free roll it ahead of the earnings. And I'm not sure whether that be, is. I've only got one session basically to try and free roll it. Let's see what happens. I think the next bar may be the earnings reaction. It got down on the earnings. So again, I don't like a bearish break on volume. And then when the stock starts setting up, like it looks, it looks wrong, if that makes sense. You want to see like a bit of demand clearly stepping back in and then like a little higher low um, coming in. You want to see like clear evidence of demand, volume, positive price action, 52 week highs, strong RS line. That's me anyway, what I'd like to be looking for. Okay, we'll play this forward. It's below the 50, so I'm going to do that. And it was just going to play it forward at 10 bars a second. If you want to do that, uh, click the play shift and then whack it on 10 times speed, basically, uh, to do that. So I'm going to wait until it's back above all the moving averages, basically. So the red line that you see there, 200 day SMA. So it's below that. No, really. I'm just not interested in playing down here. Like, we'll just miss all of this, right? There's literally no point. And it was kind of like forecast by that reaction to the earnings there. I don't need to be playing in any of this. Below the 200, below the 200. There's literally no point, guys. There's no point. Okay, you're starting to get what's quite interesting here. Okay, look at this. Gap down reversal bar on the earnings. Bit of volume coming through. Bit of volume coming through. Okay, interesting. There's no trade there yet. I mean, there was a checkout demand tail off the 50. If I was going to be super duper uber aggressive here, there. It's below the 200 that bar that bar if you were being a bit of a cowboy maybe but it wouldn't trigger it anyway so 
we remove the cowboy hat. Okay, below the 200, I'm just gonna stick with it. Below the 200, below the 200, no interest, no interest. Okay, a bit, bit better. Now we've got a bit of demand coming in. See that, see that, see that? Okay, this is now, you see the change of character for this stock. So if I go Wyckoff on you, so price cycle, those of you who studied Stan Weinstein stage analysis, phase four, stage one, look at some of the volume clues that you're getting. Okay, and now look at the increasing volume coming through. So this here would be a Wyckoff facey spring, a really strong rally. So now I'd be looking for a setup, maybe around the 10 day EMA or something like that. That was kind of a gap down reverse bar after 10 day EMA, um, but I didn't like the bar beforehand. Okay, okay. Okay, to the 21, can we get something? first test of the 21 after a huge move coming out of this so i'd be looking at this here i'd be thinking okay nice big base i didn't want that one i want this one here okay coming out of this nice big base volume rs improving i like the first test of the 21 after a big break rate. i'd probably target that and it didn't trigger anyway but now this is potentially looking a little bit more interesting shake out to Montel around the 21 Volume pops, but it's like a hammer, doji. Pull back in 20% of the highs. Okay, target that. So we do get filled on that bar there. Okay, so our free roll target, let's make that back to blue. Our free roll target, 35, 35. Let's see if we can get there. Okay, good bar. This was like a quasi inside bar. Look how the volume dried up. So you get this shake out to Martel as you pull back in for the third Friday of the month in June. I think that's going to be called witching. And then you get this tight bar that maybe explains the volume pop a little bit. Um, Tightish bar, low volume. Okay, not too much selling going on. Okay, good. We've been able to free roll the trade there. Okay, nice. So logical place for this stock to stall out is going to be base highs. So this is, again, mental framework. Pete by Anders Ericsson, excellent book on deliberate practice and understanding it. So we're expecting a bit of a testing action. There's the test, shake out demand tail. Okay, good. So again, mental frameworks, mental representations. We're expecting a pop. Logical place for it to start the test would be into base highs. There's the test. Now starting to reverse. Nice shake out demand tail coming through. Okay, good. Can we push higher? So now we're using the black line and the blue line. Nice and simple. That there, that would have been really aggressive. Um, maybe a little change of character bar there. Look at the volume pot, bearish bar. Okay, just something to note, something to note. There we go. Now, obviously, real life, I'm trailing a stop loss up behind it, giving it a bit of room. I won't leave my stop loss down here, clearly. Uh, but close below the 10, bearish bar. See how it opens on the high, goes out on the low, the volume pops, deterioration in relative strength. That's an exit for one third, okay? And there's your other exit there. Change of character, right? So, like this, like this. So, initial stop loss, 7%. So, we're free rolling at 14%. We'll call it 12%. So, we've got 12%, 95, 67. So, 12 uh, let's put the right number in 12 95 67 so an average there of 58 that's going to be a pullback so we just change this remember there's a link to this in the description below upst and then 58.33 so this is one of the benefits of trading the quicker stocks the higher adr stocks is you're more likely to get these kind of bigger moves when these stocks want to run oftentimes they can have large short interest as well so you can get a short squeeze too so again see this here this is the intermediate term trend ending. This is the change character. This is large operators exiting. These are what Jesse Livermore will call, call the warning signs, the danger signs to be aware of. So we can now just avoid all of this. We're below the 50. I have no interest in playing down here. I choose when I want to play and I don't want to play down here. We'll fast forward it. Okay, good. See these volume clues starting to come in. Okay, look at this. It's a gap down bar. There's a doji, then it doesn't go anywhere. Then you have to shake out demand tail to test. Look how the volume gets. More volume pop. Look at the volume coming in. This is a sign of what? It's a sign of large operators initiating positions. Okay, not bad. Look at the volume coming through. Starting to see the volume clues like we had in the base over here. Okay, the volume is giving you a clue for what's happening. Okay, look at the volume. And it's not just, oh, there's volume. What did price do? What's it doing from a structural standpoint as well? Where are we? Are we phase four? Are we phase one? Are we phase two? Have we just had a nice big breakout? And then we're closing below. So the 10 and 21, how are we closing below the 10 and 21? Well, we're opening on the high, closing on the low, back to back bearish bars. And then you get this gap down bar that opens on the high, closes very weak, widespread candlestick on volume, institutions exiting positions. Now it looks like they're starting to step back up again. Okay, interesting. We're following the footprints of the stock what are the institutions doing and then that there is the is the final bar 
So okay, decent session there for uh, for for UPSD. Is every trade going to be a winning trade? Absolutely not. Every trade is going to be a be a winning trade. But hopefully like that it's giving you a little bit of a, a little bit of a flavour for these. Um, for these kind of entries and following along with the volume clues, the type of setups that I like targeting as uh, as well. So thank you very much for, for watching, guys. I appreciate it. I'd really encourage you to go and do these bar by bar deliberate practice sessions. Again, peak by Anders Ericsson over the holiday period. Peak by Anders Ericsson. Must read book, must listen to book to really understand the importance of deliberate practice, how you can actually realize that trading is a skill set and how you can work on improving your skill set in the four main areas of a trade. Number one, how do you identify a high quality setup? Number two, how how do you go about initially controlling the risk? Number three, how do you mitigate the risk? Free roll the trades, I was showing you that. And number four, what we're doing with riding that is the optimizing profits. What are the selling rules? What are the selling guidelines that you are using for the stock? So thank you for watching the video. Thank you for supporting the channel. And I look forward to seeing you in a future video.